Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. With a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Working harder and doing more on while you're spinning like 50,000 plates is not going to work. You're going to drop them. They're going to break. You're going to break. And I hate, I hate to say that that's going to be your demise, but I've seen it way too many times where women have pushed themselves past their limits and they're sitting inside of a freaking Target bathroom having a panic attack, trying to keep it together because their kids are watching them. We want to prevent that. girl imagine a life where you feel supported connected and understood i get it being a mom is hard especially when you're spinning so many plates we exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family you deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings on this podcast i provide practical and relatable life experiences i teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. Here we go again. For whatever reason, you decide to jab me and then play it off cool, and the kids are under the impression that I'm the crazy one. I'm the crazy one because I reacted to your passive-aggressive comment. How is it that you can be so freaking calm, 
so freaking calm and act like none of this faces you knowing damn well you just jabbed me like literally jabbed me by making that comment and what am I supposed to do I'm just supposed to stay quiet how many more things do I have to shove under the rug until I'm able to go ahead and speak my piece But oh, that's right. I can't. I can't. You want to know why I can't? Because I will explode. I will explode. I'm so overwhelmed. How many times do I have to tell you I am overwhelmed? I am freaking overwhelmed. I'm stressed. And for whatever reason, you think washing the dishes or putting away laundry one time in the entire month is you doing your part. What about helping with the kids? What about helping with schoolwork? I do everything I can so you don't blow up. I do everything I can so you're not stressed out. But then I miss one thing and you totally throw it in my face. One freaking thing. I asked you, I simply asked you, hey, laundry's downstairs. Who's putting that away? Your family's coming. You replied with, oh, well, I told the girls to do it. Okay, well, did you follow up with them? The minute I asked you if you followed up with them, what was your reply? I want you to be honest. What was your reply? Well, what about you? What did you do? Why did did you follow up with them? That was your reply. You threw it back on me. You threw it back on me. And then you ended up pissed. You ended up so mad. And it's like, how in the hell is this my fault? What did I do? I tried to remain calm. I tried to remain calm. I'm not going to allow this to blow up into an argument. I just asked you if you followed up with the kids. Well, you were upstairs all day. What'd you do? What'd you do? Did you follow up with them? Did you follow up with them? Honey, I don't want to argue with you. It's just a simple question. Well, I'm not answering it. I don't have time for this. And then you storm and walk away. You storm and walk away. Are you freaking kidding me? How is this now back on me? How am I the one that's going to carry the, this burden? Your family's coming. Who's going to put these clothes away? Me? After all the things that I've already done all day, and now this is going to be added to my damn list? Are you kidding me? And what makes it even worse is it's 8 o'clock at night. I just want to relax. But because you decided to throw this damn tantrum, it's going to be left on me? Oh, hell no. Hell no. This is unfair. And I don't want to scream. I don't want to yell because the kids are here. But that's really the only way I can get to you is by yelling. I don't want to do this laundry. But I know the only way I'll get out of it is if I am on your ass. And I tell you, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But I know I'm going to be met with you ignoring me. I know you're going to be met with you probably completely shutting down, which is only going to upset me even more. It's only going to upset me even more because what's going to happen? The kids are going to hear me yell. And who is going to be the enemy? Who is going to be the villain in all of this? Me. There goes mom again. She can't hold it together. There goes mom again flipping the switch. Dad's so patient. Dad's so calm. Mom's the crazy one. Mom's the crazy one. She can't hold it together. That's usually how it plays out. Ladies, how familiar is this story to you? Trying to go ahead and get everything together, trying to keep the peace, doing everything you can, even if it means compromising yourself, even if it means compromising yourself, because you want to make sure you have some form of stability, right? Some form of balance. And then your husband brings up, one thing or makes this passive aggressive comment and there you are you've held on to everything you've brushed it under the rug all day all week all month trying to keep it together and then he says this one passive aggressive comment well what are you doing about it and then you explode you explode not giving a shit who's around because at that moment you are so pissed and in complete disbelief That he has the freaking balls to go out and say this. Right? Well, let's go ahead and identify what's going on here. The main problem is you've held it in. You've kept it to yourself. For fear of poking the bear. For fear of this exact situation. 
primarily because maybe you didn't know how to handle it. Maybe you didn't know what to say. Maybe you didn't know how to have a healthy conversation with your husband because of the constant fighting or the complete withdrawal and complete dismissive, dis, like dismissal of emotions, right? I think I totally made that word up. When he dismisses emotions, that's what I mean. But like all of these things happen for us and our goal is not to blow up. Our goal is not to be upset, not to yell in front of the kids, try to maintain our sanity. But when we've been pushed so far, when we've been pushed so damn far trying to keep the peace, well, usually what happens is we fall into the yelling mother. And that's the place most of us don't want to be. And we feel so much shame whenever we go there. So much shame because our kids just watched us yell. Our kids just watched us turn into this freaking monster. And it's crazy because when you turn into the monster, it's so hard to hold back. Because at that point, you don't even give a shit. At that point, I'm, I don't know if you've been there. I know I've been there. I know I've heard several women, several moms who have said, Veronica, and at that point, I am so frustrated. I am so frustrated it, I just blow up. I don't, I, and I try to control it. I try to do my best to control it, but it's like, I'm so mad. I'm so irritated. I'm so tired of not being appreciated and not being recognized of constantly being unseen. So at this point, done, done, done. Why is this a problem? Well, because your kids only see you in extremes, extreme shutting down, you do everything that needs to be done, maintaining the household, doing all of, you know, the to-do list, school, all of these things, right? Love, making sure they're on, on point with regards to, you know, anything, anything, anything with regards to sports, anything with regards to schoolwork. You know, if your son or daughter is struggling with reading, if your son or daughter is struggling with math, like all of those things you're trying to, you're trying to attend to right? And you try to go ahead and do it because you know, if you have your husband do it, he's going to lose his patience and you don't want your kids to see him lose his patience. So whatever, it's not a big deal. I'll go ahead and take care of it. I'll take care of it. That's the problem. You can't take care of all of it. It's just not possible. And like I've told you in last episodes, you carry resentment when you try to put all of the load on yourself. Don't get me wrong. I know that this is like, it's just easier this way, Veronica. It's just easier if I just get it done. It's so much easier. No, I I get it. I get it. However, what is it costing you? One of the ladies that I was coaching, she said, "I I knew I always wanted to be a mom. I always wanted to be married. I always wanted to have, you know, the house, the kids, the the dog." Like, I always wanted that. And now I have it. But I'm so tired. I don't feel like my, my my life's balanced. I try to create this schedule. But anytime I create the schedule, it's just so hard to follow. And then I'm left at the end of the night with all of these tasks that weren't done. I don't even pay any any mind to the ones that were. But it's like all of these tasks weren't done. And I hate to admit it, but my identity is identified by the tasks, the tasks I complete. And sometimes I don't think I'm worthy of time alone, of time to go ahead and work or focus on my dreams. I'm reminded of that whenever I try to go work out. And then my husband will ask me, well, hey, are you going to work out again? Like, what are you working out for? Who are you working out for? Or... Hey, why are you like on the internet? Like, don't we have other things to do? And so it's that guilt. Hey, are you gonna get? Are you gonna get our son? Are Are you gonna get our daughter? You know they're crying, and I have to go back to work. Like, you're automatically being told, or even there's this automatic suggestion that this is your responsibility, and you've taken it on. That's the problem. You've taken it on, and you haven't said anything, anything at all. You know, most marriages, and this is the crazy part, and every single time I work with a couple, 
this is pointed out to me every single time. And it is so crazy. It's, it's definitely mind blowing. In most marriages, there's a villain and there's a hero. Ladies, I want you to pay attention to this as I start to describe the villain and the hero. And I want you to identify who in your marriage is the hero and who in your marriage is the villain. Now, now, right away, when I say hero and villain, it's like, duh, I'm the hero. My husband's the villain. But I want you to pay attention to some characteristics, some, some character traits here. So the hero. And these are my findings whenever I'm working with couples. The hero tends to be passive aggressive. Everyone sees them as calm. Their partners feel gaslighted and crazy sometimes. The hero can be dismissive of emotions, dismissive of whatever issues happening, avoidant and withdrawn. They will switch the subject and kids will see them as the parent that needs to be rescued. They don't discipline or make decisions. They'll usually pass it along. You didn't think I was going to describe the hero that way, did you? Yeah, that's the hero. Now let's go to the villain. The villain usually appears as explosive and quickly triggered. They become reactive and once again, they are positioned as the problem. Villain is usually the disciplinary parent, the one that makes the decisions. So mamas, as I describe that, I want you to identify which one, which one you are. And I want you to be careful. I want you to really, really think about this. Are you the villain or are you the hero? Now, before you, before you grasp on to that hero role, notice how these are both extreme. Both extreme, extreme roles. Neither of them are healthy. What they're doing is they're latching on to everything they've known from their past, from their upbringing. And they're, they've created this persona. Notice how I say they gravitate to what they've learned from their past. The reason why they do that is because they've watched maybe their parents in their marriages. And they've watched the dynamics. And so when they've watched these dynamics, they've clinged on to one more so than the other. Let me give you an example. In my parents' marriage, my mom was explosive. My mom was the villain. I don't think she would position her in that position herself in that light. But as a kid, and and now as an adult, I don't see her like that anymore. But as a kid, oh yes, mom was a villain. Mom was reactive. No wonder dad left all the time. Mom was always yelling at him. Huh? No wonder dad left all the time. It's interesting that I use those words considering that every single time he left, He was either out breaking the law or he was cheating with somebody. He was cheating on my mom with somebody. I shouldn't say every time. Don't get me wrong. My dad was an extremely hard worker. But notice how I automatically positioned my mom as the villain because she was explosive. Dad, dad would just get frustrated. Dad would get so frustrated because here here we go. Mom's yelling at him again. And there were times I remember it would be like, mom, stop yelling at dad. He's going to leave. Like, don't yell at him. Don't upset him. Mind you, I didn't understand this. I didn't understand this until I was sitting in front of a couple. And it was like, holy shit. Holy shit. And then I had to apply all of the things I I had learned in school, right? In grad school. And it was like, oh my goodness. This is totally happening right now. Totally happening right now. And little by little, after I met with couple after couple after couple, years of meeting with hundreds of couples, I noticed that there was this pattern. There's a villain and there's a hero. And my dad, my dad was looked at as the hero because he was calm in my eyes, because he was calm. Don't get me wrong. There was all I knew my dad had, uh, you know, heroin addiction. I knew my dad had struggled with alcoholism, but when you give them these two roles, yeah, My dad was a hero in regards to conflict. Everything else, okay, maybe not so much. But in regards to conflict, my dad was the hero. 
I knew my dad was cheating on my mom. I knew it because I would pick up the phone and there would be some girl on the other line calling, asking me for my dad. Like, how homegirl are you going to call my house and ask for my dad knowing down while my mom lives here? Maybe she doesn't know. Who knows? But I'm getting off track. But I, whenever they would argue, yeah, my dad would go into being quiet, calm, and he would just leave. My mom would end up screaming, right? My mom would be so frustrated, so overwhelmed, so stressed out. And then I thought, oh my gosh, we are a burden to my mom. We're a burden to my mom. And so I'm going to stay quiet. I'm not going to add to her plate. If there's an issue, well, I'll just figure it out myself as a 10 year old, as a 12 year old, as a 15 year old poison. That is poison. That is not healthy, but that's what I would do. I don't want to add more to my mom's plate because I see my mom is stressed out. And then when my dad would leave, guess who she would take it out on? That's right. Us, us. And so, yeah, my mom, my mom was in this villain role. However, my mom did make decisions. My mom did put us in modeling. She put us in pageants. My mom worked her ass off. I mean, my mom didn't have a high school education and yet there she is trying to help me, trying to help me figure out my math or trying to write, you know, paper for me, you know, staying up with me, trying to build. I remember she was helping me build this. I don't know if you ever had it, but there's a mission project, right? My mom was so freaking creative. She's like, we're going to make it out of sugar cubes because we didn't have a lot of money back then, but that's what she did. But notice how my mom is still positioned as this as the villain, even though she did hero like things, right? But she was the villain because she was explosive. She was the villain because Dad left because of her, even though that was so false. That's the way I had positioned it in my head. So guess who I wanted to be? I wanted to be the one who had control. I wanted to be the one who left. I wanted to be the one who was dismissive of emotion. But alongside that, I also noticed that I would make passive aggressive comments. I would do whatever I could to hurt the other person. And I know, holy shit, Veronica, you totally sound vindictive. But I hate to say it. Yeah, I wanted to kill with words. And ladies, please don't even try to front. You know you have purposely said certain things to hurt, especially your partner when you feel so damn overwhelmed. So don't even try me. But that's where I would go. I would, I try to take my dad's role. I would pick arguments with Willie so that way he would leave or I could leave just so I didn't have to deal with conflict. I didn't want to deal with conflict. But somewhere down the line, I also started to embrace my mom's, my mom's character traits. And I became extremely explosive later on in our marriage. It's crazy how like I switched roles, but I did. And then Willie was the one who was very passive. I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. Willie was, Willie has always been the one that he wouldn't yell. Like it would take a lot for him to yell, but he would be more of like, I'm just going to internalize this. I'm just going to internalize this. But now I I shouldn't say now, but like, well, you know what? Yeah. I'm lying. Yeah. Now I try not to brush things under the rug so I'm not explosive, but there are certain things he says, especially if it deals with my work. If he says, well, if he ever says, oh, I'm starting to get pissed off right now. Luckily, Willie's not in the room. (laughs) But if he was to say, well, you know, you're working so much. Oh, you're working so much. When are you going to have time for the kids? Oh, those are fighting words. Those are fighting words. I'm not going to lie. That would set me off. And he and I have had conversations about that because it hurts so damn much. I've struggled with being a working mom and what this means and how I'm going to go ahead and manage my time. But that I know is a, is a trigger for me. And like I mentioned, he and I've had those conversations, but as of right now, I, I don't think we fall so much in those roles. We've, we've done so much work, but if, if we were, if, you know, just kind of for example sake, if we were, if I was to give you that example, yeah, I can be explosive whenever I'm hurt and there's a passive aggressive comment made. Willie can be totally dismissive of emotion and avoidance and even start playing with the kids, like start playing with kids, start talking to the kids, not to, not to, you know, have them, um, not to position them. So they're not on my side or his side. So they take sides, not at all, but it's like, 
okay, let's go ahead and ignore the elephant in the room, this crazy person. And how is your day at school? Which only pisses me off even more. But ladies, are you starting to get the gist of this, of what the hero and what the villain looks like and why this is such a significant problem? Now, let me go into the effects of the problem. This can impact your relationship significantly. Here's why. If your kids think you're the crazy one and your husband is the hero, guess what your family thinks? Oh, Willie's so calm. I don't know how he puts up with you. Huh? Huh? What? Willie is so calm. You're the crazy one. Calm down. Why are, why are you like that? Are you freaking kidding me? Homeboy just made a passive aggressive comment. You didn't hear that? Oh God, come on, Veronica. That's not a big deal. That, that right there is when other people step in and then bring to your attention that he is the hero. Knowing you, knowing damn well that that's not the case. But when other people validate his or her position as the hero, who? You start to question yourself. Am I the crazy one? Am I the crazy one? Is something wrong with me? Maybe I need to do more. I've been compromising myself this entire time. No wonder they don't appreciate me because I'm the crazy one. I'm the one that's explosive. Which then triggers that, that, that feeling of self-worth. You start to feel you're not, like you're not worthy. In addition to that, well, if I'm the crazy one, then that means I need to work harder, meaning I need to compromise myself more. All of that, all of that right there are the effects of the hero and villain dynamic. And so it's very difficult for you to try to convince other people otherwise, right? Because they see what they see. And we all would love to say, oh, I don't give a crap about their their opinion. But we all know that's a freaking lie. It hurts. It cuts deep. It does. And the minute you say, I don't even care what other people think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on blast right now. You are lying. Let's talk about the lies you tell yourself. Because we do. The goal is not to. And, and that's where we're headed. We're, we're going to go down that path. But And I, I don't get me wrong. I will teach you. However, I want I want you to state the obvious. What's going on? I want you to be able to identify that this is an issue for you. Too many of us go around saying, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. I'll just work harder. I'll just do more. Honey, yes, it is a big deal because working harder and doing more on while you're spinning like 50,000 plates is not going to work. You're going to drop them. They're going to break. You're going to break. And I hate, I hate to say that that's going to be your demise, but I've seen it way too many times where women have pushed themselves past their limits and they're sitting inside of a freaking target bathroom having a panic attack trying to keep it together because their kids are watching them so yeah it happens i see it i've seen it i've seen it happen on multiple multiple occasions through multiple stories that my clients have given me we want to prevent that so if you recognize you have too much on your plate, you recognize that there are way too many, too many things going on for me and I need to speak up. Ladies, speak up before you take on this villain role. Your kids, your family, hell, you, more importantly, you, you need to work on it instead of brushing it under the rug. We can all use a little help in our marriage, especially when it comes to communicating. I have created a guide just for you. And guess what? It's 100% free. I will give you practical tips and easy to use strategies to apply right now. That's right, right now, today. You all know I'm a huge advocate for you mamas and I am on a mission to help you experience true connection and stress-free living. Ladies, we are setting our marriages up for success. It starts with you. You will find this freebie here in my show notes or go to empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash guide. The information I will be providing you is next level and people pay good money to get these tips that I will be giving you for free. Don't forget to share this with a friend who needs it. So let's go ahead and talk about 
let's go ahead and talk about how, how do we resolve this, Veronica? Okay, so we're here. I know I'm the villain. I know I'm the villain or I know I'm the hero. What do I do? Well, mama, don't brag about being the hero because it, it, it's nothing to brag about. And don't brag about being the villain. Identify it. Which one, which, which one better suits me? Which one, you know, when I look at it, when I look at all the characteristics, which one do I honestly fall under? You know, am I the one that looks like I have it all together, but totally passive aggressive, doesn't make decisions, avoidant, right? Trying to go ahead and run to my partner's aid to fix them, (laughs) hashtag manipulate them into doing what I want them to do because I know what's better for them. Or do you go into the villain role, explosive? You're the one who makes all the decisions. You take on all the work, nonstop, nonstop. Which one are you? So once you've been able to identify which role you are, the villain or the hero, I want you to be able to identify what exactly triggers you. What what triggers you? Because during those moments when you're in the heat, when you are in the heat of the moment, that is not the time for you to break this down. Oh, I'm taking, um, I'm totally the, the hero or, oh, I'm totally the villain. Because in that moment, you are going to follow through with whatever role you embody. It's going to happen. It's going down. It is going down because you're so overwhelmed with emotion and your body is responding to that emotion. You haven't practiced this enough where you can totally calm down. That's what we need to work on. So first I want you to identify what role and then identify step two. What is it that triggers me? What is said that triggers me? Is it for me, it was the fact that, you know, if, um, if I was working, it was my job, my job being thrown in in my face, like totally like, well, you work so much, you don't even spend time with the kids. Oh, hell no. Those are fighting words. That is a trigger for me. It's a huge trigger for me, even though it's not true. It's still a trigger for me because it's an insecurity of mine. It's something that I work on daily knowing That, hey, you know what? Mama's working. And then after mama's working, mama go out and tend to the kids. But sometimes I might miss something, right? Or it might, I might sacrifice, you know, something in order to do the work that I do. Don't get me wrong. I don't do it all the time. But there are times where, you know, I I missed the girls, you know, um, parent, you know, what is that? The parent teacher conference. I missed one of those. You know, and I've missed maybe games or I've missed whatever because I've had meetings that I couldn't reschedule. And that cuts deep because I feel so, I feel so much shame. I feel like, holy shit, there's going to be a bunch of moms there and I'm going to be the only mom that's not there. There's so much guilt attached to it. Or here I am working out and my kids are inside watching TV when I can be playing with them instead of working out or you know, instead of doing this project or instead of practicing any form of self-care, getting my nails done, I can spend more time with my kids. So yeah, it cuts deep. That's a big, big one for me. That's a huge trigger. So identify what is the trigger for you? Is it the minute he walks in the house and says, oh, the house is dirty again? Really? What'd you do all day? Is that a trigger for you? Oh man, even when I say that, that's a trigger for me. You're, um, you're going down. You are going down, right? Or is it, oh, yeah, thank you so much for cooking dinner. Yeah, don't don't ever make this meal again. <gasps> Ooh, is that a trigger for you? Or what did you do all day? Oh, are you kidding me? Are you, are, are you for real right now? So basically, what triggers an emotional response? And the emotions might be something along the lines of shame. The emotion might be, you know, um, an insecurity right? It might be fear. It might be this feeling of unworthiness, right? I'm not enough. I'm a disappointment, a feeling of rejection. Those, even when I say those, when do you feel rejected by your husband? When do you feel insecure around your husband? When do you feel, um, when do you feel unappreciated by your husband or shame? So start off with those emotions and then identify what is attached to that emotion, So I feel rejected by my husband when 
I feel unappreciated by my husband when, and that's going to help you identify what that trigger is. So Veronica, why is it important that I identify the trigger? Why don't you just give us the answers on what to do whenever this happens, whenever I notice I'm going into the villain role? Well, because if I give you the answer, you're not going to do it. You're, you're not going to do it and it's not going to work. So instead, I'm helping you identify what the hell this process looks like so you can slow it down and you can become aware of it when, <laughs> two things, before it's happening and then when it happens. And you'll be able to hear me. Wait a minute, Veronica said, identify the trigger. I already know I'm the villain. Okay, so what's the trigger? Do you see what I mean? You'll be able to slow it down instead of being zero to a thousand. So once you've been able to identify the trigger, those are the insecurities I want you to personally work on. Like those are yours. That is all of yours. These are your insecurities and it is your time. It is your duty. It is your duty to work on them. Your husband's not going to work on them for you. You have to, you, you you don't have to. However, I'm totally going to advise you to do it because if you don't, this is going to be a trigger. This is going to be something that triggers you over and over again. This is going to be an insecurity of yours. You're going to have a very difficult time, very difficult time processing it and coming back from it. You're going to go straight to anger. You're going to go straight to anger, straight to avoidance. So I want you to work on that and I'm going to help you. If you're following me on Instagram, I post reels all of the time on issues like that. If you're following me on Instagram, send me a DM, Veronica, this is what I'm totally struggling with. Like this right here. I listen to your podcast. When you said this, psh, or just tell me, you know, Veronica, I'm totally the villain, to- villain right here or hero right here, right? And whatever you want me to help you with, I will help you with. But for the most part, on my Instagram page, I have a whole bunch of reels and I have a whole bunch of IGTVs. In addition to that, I also have a private Facebook free group. And in that group, I also cover a bunch of, you know, every Wednesday, at 10 o'clock, I'm switching it to 10 o'clock. Every Wednesday at 10 o'clock, I'm teaching you something different. Or I'm having my guests come on teaching you something different. I'm about to, um, matter of fact, oh, this 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 podcast will drop while I'm promoting the guide. Ladies, five mistakes to avoid, five mistakes to avoid for a healthy marriage. Like, you got you to gotta get that guide. And I'll go ahead and give you information about it. But I, I do provide you with all of those things. But for now, identify the triggers. Identify what it is. Once you've been able to identify that, the next place I want you to go is how does it trigger you? How does it trigger you? Does it trigger you with believing that you're not a good enough mother? Does it trigger you with believing that, yeah, you've gained weight and you no longer... You no longer look like, you know, um, you did when you first got married and you're afraid that your husband's going to leave you or you're afraid that he thinks you're overweight or is disgusted or whatever, whatever lies we tell ourselves. But those are the insecurities that come up for us. You know, are you afraid that you're not a good wife? Like, where does this ultimately take you? And I really want you to write it down. Like, write this down, write it out so you can see how it impacts you. Because now we know how to work on it. It'll, it'll give us more or less a guide. The last thing I want you to do, the last thing I want you to do is I want you to give yourself grace. The fact that you're listening to this podcast is proof that you are an amazing mama. The fact that you're listening to this podcast is proof that you're an amazing wife. You are an amazing woman. The fact that you are listening to this podcast is proof. Here's why. You are trying to do something different. You are focused on reclaiming your identity, reigniting your marriage, really discovering who you are, and attempting to be on this path to be an exceptional mom. The fact that you're willing to learn speaks volumes of who you are. And yes, for right now, you might take the role of the villain. For right now, you might take the role of the um, the hero. You're not going to be there for the rest of your life. And I'm sure you feel guilty for whatever's ha- past shit. Maybe you got into an argument yesterday with your husband and you totally went into crazy mode. Yeah, that might be true for you. That, that might be true. 
that's all right. We get to come back from it. We are not going to imprison ourselves by our past. We're not going to do that. We're going to learn from it. And I'm super excited to be a part of your journey. So mama, get to work. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I want to personally invite you to join our girl game. It's a free Facebook community for women just like you. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash empowered and unapologetic. See you there. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind Podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. 
My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there.